أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقيل لهم أين ما كنتم تعبدون من دون الله هل ينصرونكم هل ينصرونكم أو ينتصرون I respected elders and brothers, mothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are continuing Surah Al-Shu'ara. It's the 26th Surah in the Quran, in the 19th Juz. And we are starting today from ayat number 92. Last week we were doing about Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Ibrahim alayhi salam talked a lot to the to his uh, family members and his father uh, specifically and his people about the worshipping of the idols first of all he said some statements which expressed the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which we also say in our deen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the doer of all things musabbib al-asbab the one who brings about the means, the owner of the means also. So he mentioned some things. Allah Ta'ala is the one that created me and guided me, which of course is the most important of all. With that as well, yuta'imuni wa yasqeen. Allah Ta'ala is the one that feeds me. Wa yasqeen. And he also gives me drink. Wa ida marithtu. And when I get sick, fahuwa yashfeen. There we talked a little bit about our aqidah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our faith is that everything comes from Allah ta'ala. This is the aqidah. But in regards to expressing that, we don't make anything evil associated to Allah ta'ala. This is bay'adab. This is the disrespect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why when Ibrahim alayhi salam mentioned, wa ida maristu, when I get sick, he didn't say, wa ida amradani. He didn't say, when Allah makes me sick. When I get sick, because sickness is something which is not good, when that, is, uh, when that happens to me and I get sick, فَهُوَ yashfin. Since shifa and the healing from the sickness is good, so therefore that is associated to Allah Ta'ala. He is the one that gives me healing. After that, Allah Subhanahu, Allah subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentioned some more words of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And most of the Mufassirin say, that Ibrahim alayhi salam's kalam, his statement, stopped at illa man atallaha bi qalbin salim. Except for that person who comes with a safe heart, a pure heart to Allah Ta'ala, that person who comes with a pure heart, meaning pure with tawheed, salim we say, pure from idolatry and things like this, if he comes with that heart, then the ayat before where Allah Ta'ala said, if a person comes with a pure heart and iman, it's possible that the money that he used in this world for the deen of course, and his children that he raised to be pious, and those children who were making dua for him and carried on after his demise and uh, served the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing good deeds, then obviously a person who's a believer can get benefit from that. A person who disbelieves his money and his children will not benefit him in the hereafter. But a person who believes, especially has a pure heart, then obviously those things can be a source of benefit for him. Last week I read one ayat, Qala afara'aitum. I read um, uh, mistakenly, Qala right? Uh, the tarjima was basically the same. Uh, the translation was, have you ever considered? Uh, the difference would be, Ara'aita is one person, have you ever considered? And afara'aitum is a bunch of people in front of you. Have you ever, because he was talking to his people. So the translation really didn't change. But uh, reading the ayat quickly, and sometimes I can't see with, uh, I don't have good eyesight. And this Quran, the khat is kind of small. Sometimes it gives me a little problem seeing it. So I read afara'aita. We call this sabkatul lisan. My tongue was moving faster than my brain. So it happens sometimes when you look at the Quran and things like this. But uh, the translation was basically almost the same. Just to fix that up, some brothers brought it to my attention. Last week, Jazakumullah khair. So, the last thing that we had done was the fact that Jannat will be brought close to the Muttaqeen and Jahannam will be 
uh, exposed, burriza, vuhirat, the jahannam will be exposed to the disbelievers, meaning it will also be brought in front of them on the day of Qiyamah. Both of these statements, most mufassirin, most of the commentators of Quran say this is the statement of Allah Ta'ala. No more are we quoting Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now Allah Ta'ala carries on and in many times in the Quran we've read spots like this also where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the conversation either between him and the disbelievers, him uh, and you know the munafiqeen or the kuffar, the, sometimes the disbelievers in Jahannam as they speak to each other. Allah Ta'ala talks about these things in Quran. So here also it will be a conversation with those people who did shirk. And Allah Ta'ala says in the first one, وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ It'll be said to them. It could be that Allah Ta'ala will say to them. It could be some angel will be deputed to say to them, مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبُدُونَ Where are those idols that you used to worship? We know that the mushrik in Mecca and anybody who relies on some idol or worships that other than Allah Ta'ala, he bases his reliance on that thing. And if he wants a shifa, he wants uh, some type of, uh, you know, some type of healing, so he turns to that. When he wants a job, he turns to it. Uh, he has the idol, he dresses it up. Or if he's worshiping some person, uh, it becomes his what we call his maraja, his place of return. Whenever he needs something, he turns to it. Obviously on the day of Qiyamah, that is the day, yawma idhillillah. That's the day only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will be no idols. Anybody who has a great monetary status, his money will not be able to help him. The only thing there that will be able to help not even a'mal, except by the permission of Allah Ta'ala. If Allah Ta'ala permits, then our a'mal can get rewards, we can have intercessions, things like this. But everything will be under the hukum of Allah Ta'ala, as it is in this world, but it will be totally exposed, and there will be no more means or anything. Allah strictly will be giving the orders right to us on that day. So Allah Ta'ala will ask them rhetorically, أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْبُدُونَ Those things you used to worship whenever you're in trouble, now this is your worst day. Now you have the day where you really need your idols. It was the day that you always thought that they would intercede for you. You used to say that as well. So Allah Ta'ala says, Aina ma kuntum ta'budun. Where are those idols that you used to worship? Min dunillah, other than Allah Ta'ala. Hal yansurunakum aw yantasirun. Will they help you? Will they help you now? Aw yantasirun. Or will they be able to take revenge for those people who didn't worship? As Allah Ta'ala will help the ones who believed in Him. And the ones who didn't and disbelieved in Him and were enemies of Him, He will take revenge. Dhuntiqam Allah Ta'ala is. Allah will ask them the same questions. These are the things you worshipped. Will they help you out now by sending you to Jannah? O yantasirun. Or will these idols be able to take any revenge from their enemies in the world? People that didn't worship them. Will they be able to take any revenge from them? Obviously this is a rhetorical question. It means they won't be able to. You don't always ask questions for an answer, right? If your son comes home late, so you're going to say, you said you're going to come home late tomorrow again? It doesn't mean the kid's going to say, ah, oh, let me think about it since you're asking me. Let me go home, make istikhara, let me go back to my room, make istikhara, I'll tell you tomorrow. No, the, father's at, the father really means what? Don't come home late tomorrow like this. This is a rhetorical question. This is what the question means here. هَلْ يَنْسُرُونَكُمْ أَوْ يَنْتَصِرُونَ Can they help you who worship them? Who worship them? Or can they take any intiqam? Can they get any revenge from the Muslimin? Muslims didn't worship these idols. Go tell them to take the revenge from them. They won't be able to. Allah Ta'ala then after this mentions, Allah Ta'ala says that they will be hurled face first. Fiha into the Jahannam. Kuba kibu. Kaba kaba yukab kibu in the Arabic language, means to be uh, thrown face down. There's special words for everything in Arabic. Kab kaba. Kab kaba means to be thrown straight down. Allah Ta'ala in another ayat says, أَفَمَا يَتَّكِي بِوَجْهِهِ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ That person, how, what terrible state he's in, that person who will defend himself or he will face, or you can say he will... Uh, uh, he will encounter, better word, he will encounter the punishments of Jahannam with his face. Right? The face is the most 
uh, we say Sharif, it is the most honorable part of our body. That's why in Islam, even in the uh, difficult battles of war, where swords are flying, bullets are flying, different, different things are taking place, but still Islam says that don't hit anybody in the face. Don't hit them in the face. Allah Ta'ala says in the war, you can hit them in the neck, anywhere in the body, but not in the face. You should not do that. Because the face is the most respected and honorable part of the body. The day of Qiyamah and the punishment will be such that the ulama say, and it comes in hadith and tafsir also, that these people, those who disbelieve that Allah protect us, they will have a yoke on their neck, a metal chain, a metal bra brace around their neck. There will be loops there and their hands will be tied like this. And they will be thrown into Jahannam. And usually if something's coming at your face, you will do like this. People have car accidents, they do like this. Because you don't want your face to be hit. No one does like this. Oh, watch my stomach. Or watch my arm. No, no. My face. Watch out for my face. I don't want anything to hit my face. On the day of Qiyamah, when they're thrown into Jahannam, unfortunately they will not be able to do that. Their hands will be tied here. So when they go to the punishment, it'll go right. They'll go right in their faces. May Allah protect all of us and our families. فَكُبِكِبُ fiha. They will be hurled face first. Fiha, this ha is going back to Jahannam. Fi Jahannam. In the fire of Jahannam, they will be hurled into there. Hum dham, wal ghawun, and also the deviated ones also. Not only idolaters, not only these specific people of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ghawun, ghawa. Ghawa means to be astray, to be deviated. Anybody who's deviated, anybody who worshipped an idol, worshipped anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, even somebody who may have been a muwahid, who may have been a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but unfortunately was falling into very, very major sins. We don't know of this part, but we know that in other parts it's mentioned, and in hadith also, that they also may be thrown into jahannam also. May Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq to have taqwa, stay away from sins, and to make tawbah, right now and always to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we face him without these sins on our account. Allah ta'ala says also, وَجُنُودُ إِبْلِيسَ أَجْمَعُونَ And also the army of Iblis. Iblis means shaitan, one of his names. Iblis comes actually from Balasa, and Balasa actually means to be hopeless. Iblis. So the one who's hopeless, the Shaitan, his army, his group, his jama'ah, the ones who followed him, the ones who assisted him, ajma'un, all of them, bighayri istitna, without any exception, they all will also go into Jahannam as well. Qalu wahum fiha yakhtasimun. And they will say, while they are in Jahannam, Qalu, they will say, وَهُمْ فِيهَا يَخْتَسِمُونَ While they are arguing in Jahannam. This comes many, many times in Qur'an. The ikhtisam, the khasm of the Ahlul Nar. May Allah protect us. They will be in the fire and they will be blaming each other. And telling it's your fault. No, it's your fault. Why you did like this? And of course, at the end point, both of them will know that there's no escape for any of us. We're both going to be in here together as we were together in the dunya doing our wrongs as well. So Allah Ta'ala says, Qalu, they will say, while they are in their arguing, so they are now talking to each other, but they're arguing to, e to each other. And what will they say? Tallahi in kunna lafi dhalalim mubeen. They will say that by Allah, Tallahi means same thing like Wallahi. Tallahi, the only thing that this tide only comes with the name of Allah. It's a qasm. It's the way that you express an oath. Uh, use the tah, tallahi. But you can't say anything else but tallahi. You can't say uh, tal kitab or ta something. No, you can't say that. Just Allah. So tallahi, I swear by Allah or by Allah, in kunna lafi dalalim mubin. Verily, we were in manifest, clear misguidance. Meaning in the dunya, we were very clearly misguided. And we had really, we were really off. They're realizing it, but of course, as we've seen in other ayats and studied so many times, that it's too late for them. All of this is just uh, screaming without any benefits. Then they said, 
إذ نسويكم برب العالمين. When we had equalized you with the Lord of all the worlds. So here we can see that these mushrikeen are talking actually to their idols. Of course, Allah Ta'ala throwing an idol and punishing an idol won't really do anything because they're lifeless objects. But this is to now, they say, put salt on the wound, right? To make it even worse. Allah Ta'ala could have just destroyed the idols and thrown them in Jahannam. But Allah Ta'ala throws the idols with them in Jahannam. And they're talking to these idols. And they're saying that we were in clear misguidance. Ibn Sawikum bi Rabbil Alameen. When we kept you and the Lord of all the world on an equal pedestal, that you were both the same. Allahu Rabbul Alameen and my idol, both are about the same. I'm worshipping my idol, I'm asking it for risk, I'm praying to it every day, I'm devoted to it. And there's the Muslims devoted to their Lord. How can it be the same? Allah is Rabbul Alameen. He's the Lord of all the worlds, not even the Alam of the Ins, not only our own world, but the ants, they have their own little world and things that they do. Allah is the Rabb of that. You've got the outer space, things that are going on there. Allah is the Rabb of that. That's why He says, Alameen, the worlds. There's so many different realms and so many different worlds and so many things that we don't even know right now are happening. In this carpet right now, there's a world, right? If you look inside microscopic, there's little tiny little, you know, mites inside there. They're doing their own thing. And it's like a whole world for them. If you're like this small, then this, forget it, this is like uh, Texas for you. So it's so big. Allah is the love of that also. Everything Allah Ta'ala is the love of. So how can we now, we were in clear misguidance when we had equaled Allah Ta'ala, na'udhu billah, when we equaled the idols to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. Sawa yusawi means to equalize, to bring something on the same level. وَمَا أَضَلَّنَا إِلَّا الْمُجْرِمُونَ Of course, they still will be blaming others in the fire of Jahannam. نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أَضَلَّنَا And nobody misguided us except for the wrongdoers. There were people who persuaded us, talked to us, they had the gift of the gab, they had nice temples, they told us that they knew what was going on. They made us worship those idols. They're the ones that led, led us astray. He says, فَمَالَنَا They will plead out and say, there is no interceder for us now. Those people who led us astray, the mujrimun, they cannot intercede for us and get any help for us in the dunya they did they knew all the government officials and they knew the you know the uh, commissioner for the police and they knew this guy and that guy and I can get you this and I can get you that they had their connections but here in Jahannam who's got connections no one's got connections with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the mujrimun those who led us astray they cannot get us out of here nor can these idols they're all sitting here with us so there's no interceder for us no one to help us وَلَا صَدِيقٍ Hamim, And there is no friend. Sadiq, Hamim, who is a very close friend. Hamim means someone who is your best friend. There is no best friend, a close friend. And usually with your close friend, you know, you go everywhere and you ask for help, but there is always that friend you can turn to. You can always give him a call. I'm coming right now in five minutes. Even if you didn't help him, even if you cursed him, you got some problem with him, there's something going on, but you're in jail now 12 o'clock at night, he, you call him sometimes even before your father and mother, you call him. Listen, listen, help me out, I got me, okay, I'm coming right over, I got you. And they come, and they start coming and they help you out. So even that won't be there. They won't have any friend as well to help them out. Of course, then they will start now uh, dreaming about some type of second chance, which of course they cannot ever get. And Allah Ta'ala says, فَلَوْ أَنَّ لَنَا كَرَّةً فَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَلَوْ أَنَّ لَنَا If it was only for us, كَرَّةً, a return. Only if we could return. Karra actually means to return. رَجْعَةً أَكَرْ هَمَارَ پَاس كُوِي وَاپِسِ كَرَاسْتَ هَي If we had some way that we can just go back, Show us the door, the exit. We can go back and go back in dunya. 
فَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So then we would be from amongst the believers. What nadamat and what sadness they will have that they won't be able to go back and what khayish, what desire they'll have to be believers. But they never in eternity can go back and believe. And this is in no way, na'udhu billah, we've discussed this before already, this is in no way any oppression on the side of Allah Ta'ala. Because if Allah Ta'ala sent them back, they would only believe for a few days and they'd go back. They'd come back, make a few sajdas cry, go outside, someone would say, hey bye, come over here, let's go, this, this, that, Super Bowl, uh, finished. Khatam. By the next week, they'll be back again, they'll say, you know what, we got a little chance, let's get, take some opportunity before I die, I'll make the tawbah, and now I know what's in the akhirat. And he'll just carry on like that. So even if they went back, this is a lie, they will not be believers. Allah Ta'ala, as He's mentioned in this ayat, in the end of each story, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً وَمَا كَانَ أَكْثَرُهُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah Ta'ala says, Verily in that, meaning the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, him talking to his people, and then at ending, Allah Ta'ala talking about the realities of the day of Qiyamah and even after in Jahannam, all of these are a sign, ayatan. It's a sign. The same way the sign says, come to this place, come to that place, we go off the sign, the sign follow the sign. But unfortunately, most of the people, they are not going to believe in the sign. They're not going to take it as a sign. They ignore it and they don't care. But Allah Ta'ala showed them, وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الرَّحِيمُ And your Lord, He is Aziz. We've done this many times. Aziz means the one who is almighty. الْغَالِبْ عَلَى كُلِّ أَمْرٍ He is the one who overpowers all his affairs. If Allah Ta'ala wants to keep someone a disbeliever, He can keep someone a disbeliever. If He wants to have that disbeliever live for his whole life and become a believer in the last second, He can do that. If He wants a believer to be a believer his whole life and become a disbeliever in the end of his life, he can do that. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants people to stay in Jahannam forever, he can do that. He's Aziz, he can do whatever he wants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahim. On the day of Qiyamah, he will forgive those people who believed in him. Wakana bil mu'minin rahima. Every day we say this word, Ar Rahman ir Rahim. Translation wise, it's very difficult because they both mean merciful. In the Arabic language, there's a big difference between the two. Ar-Rahman, a'ammu min ar-Rahim. Rahman, the word Rahman, it is more general, it has a more general meaning than Rahim. Because Rahman is that Allah, that sifat and that quality of Allah Ta'ala, of His mercy, that is stretched out and touches and affects every single one of His creation. Whether that creation believes in Him or not. Whether they're His enemy or His friend. Every single thing is benefiting every second from the Rahman, the mercy of Allah Ta'ala. Ar-Rahman. That's why Allah Ta'ala devotes a whole surah to it. And in that surah, when we do it later on, the reason why Allah Ta'ala says Ar-Rahman is devoted, because every single thing that Allah Ta'ala is doing with us here is from His Rahmah. He doesn't need to do it. But Rahim, Rahim is khas. It's more special. وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ الرَّحِيمَ Rahim is for the believers on the day of Qiyamah. Sifat rahim At that time they will see who Rahim is when Allah, when Allah Ta'ala starts forgiving those people who believed, even the person who will come with so many sins and he will come just with La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. This of course is not the general meaning. Now we get up and leave tafsir and say, what the hell, who cares? Just La ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah and done, finished. No, no. This is not the general, but one person who knows what type of sincerity he has, Allah knows best, one person with just la ilaha, just one inch of belief with him, Allah Ta'ala will forgive him and send him into Jannah. So now moving on to the next story. كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Allah Ta'ala now moves to the story of Nuh alayhi salam. Going back, because Ibrahim alayhi salam was more forward, Musa, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Musa and Ibrahim alayhi salam, the reason why they were made taqdeem and they were brung before Nuh alayhi salam, historically they were not before, they were after Nuh alayhi salam, but because Musa alayhi salam had great 
similarities with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And similarly, Ibrahim alayhi salam's deen has great similarities to the deen of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's why they were brought forward. And now the story of Nuh alayhi salam, the first one who was sahibu sharia, the first one who was sahibu da'wah. Because we know that Adam alayhi salam came. After that, most of the people were on tawheed. Everybody was on tawheed. When kufr started coming in, and disbelief, then the first prophet that was sent to them was Nuh alayhi salam. He was the first one to come with the da'wah and the first prophet to face the disbelievers. So Allah Ta'ala says, كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ الْمُرْسَلِينَ The people of Nuh alayhi salam, they rejected the messengers. Now, if anybody is really thinking, and not even thinking, but wondering, that why is the word mursaleen said here? The people of Nuh alayhi salam, he was the first one to give da'wah. And the people of Nuh alayhi salam, they only rejected Nuh. They didn't reject all the other prophets. They didn't know who Muhammad sallallahu was. They didn't know who Isa, Musa, Ibrahim, and all the other prophets were. So why would Allah Ta'ala say that Nuh alayhi salam, the people of Nuh alayhi salam, rejected the messengers? Why would he say that? The reason is, is because in our deen also, in our religion also, and in the religions before, to reject one prophet is synonymous to rejecting all the prophets. You can have a beard to your belly button, the pants can be up to right under your shin, and you could be giving the best Arabic bayan. And you could be, mashallah, reciting the ayats of Qur'an. But if you comes out your mouth that I don't believe in Isa alayhi salam, na'udhu billah. Or even disrespect him in any way. That is not a believer in our deen. Every single prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we respect. Every single prophet we believe in. And we believe they are masum also. Ismat. We have a very clear and innocent belief in regards to the prophets. Even if the Bible has some story about a prophet and the Christians are reading it in their churches, and the Jews are reading it in their synagogues. And that story, like many of them are there, is expressing that a prophet, na'udhu billah, fell into some type of sin. We reject that story. We say that, no, no, this is against the ismat, and the innocence, and the sinlessness of the anbiya, of the prophets. The prophets were masoom. They never, na'udhu billah, would sleep with their daughters, like is mentioned about Nuh alayhi salam and Lut alayhi salam, na'udhu billah, in the Bible. And drinking and all these different things that were said, na'udhu billah, even some prophets, they say, disbelieve for a little while. No, 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 we don't believe. That's why Nabi Sam said, la usaddiq wa la ukaddib. I don't say what they're saying is true, nor do I say it's a lie. Allah knows best what they're talking about. So, now we look at Nuh alayhi salam, and Nuh alayhi salam, some ulama say that Nuh alayhi salam, his name comes from a word in Arabic which means niha or noha, which means to cry. To cry. Naha. So Nuh alayhi salam was called this because he always was crying. He was very, very sad and very uh, upset at his people. 950 years giving the da'wah to them. In the Safat al Tafasir, it's mentioned that the people were so against Nuh alayhi salam that, and he lived a long time and probably lived through some progenies also. Allah Ta'ala gave him a long life. So he said that people would bring their children to him. Not for any ilaj, not to, to have lunch or breakfast together, nothing like that. They would bring the child and they would stand in front of the fence of Nuh alayhi salam's house, and Nuh would be in front of his house, and they would tell their, their son, Oh my son, that is Nuh. Make sure that you don't believe in him. And then that son would grow up and tell his son that that's Nuh, he's telling about a wrong thing, believe in your idols, don't believe in him. This is the type of uh, people he was dealing with. So Allah Ta'ala mentions and talks about them, and we mentioned these stories before. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ نُوحٌ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ And remember when their brother Nuh alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam was from the family of his people, his qawm, 
If you look at the progeny, maybe his uncle, sister's brother, all of them were there. They all had family relations. So that's why Allah Ta'ala says, Ahuhum. The prophets were all sent to their own people so that, uh, that compatibility can be there. Even their language also was the same. It wasn't that he brought someone from somewhere else, Timbuktu, and now he's coming there and saying, Hi, how are you? I'm a prophet. We don't know you. Who are you? Even though we know and we read the ayats before that this was a request from the mushrik in Mecca, that why you had to come? It should be in some, the Quran should come in some other language. That would be cool. Why would that be cool? The Quran come down in Swahili, you don't even understand Swahili. And now the Quran's coming, now you're looking for a translator. It's coming in your language. It's coming from your friend. You used to play baseball with him when you were younger. Of course, the prophet played baseball. I'm just giving you an example. So, when their brother came to them, it called alahum. When their brother said to them, Nuhun, who's their brother? Nuh alayhi salam was their brother. Allah tattakun, meaning Allah tattakun Allah. Why are you not fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Inni lakum rasulun ameen. Verily, I am a messenger who is trustworthy for you. I'm a trustworthy messenger. Subhanallah, the prophets, it was not such that they were characters and some weird people before they became Nabi. And then later on when they became Nabi, they were something different. No, we know Amin was also the name of our beloved Prophet wasallam. And this was amongst all the prophets that they had impeccable and beautiful character throughout their lives. They were not involved in sins and things like this. None of them. As we men mentioned about Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam, 13 years old, he's already giving da'wah to his people before he's even a Nabi. Musa alayhi salam was brought into the worst place, the palace of Fir'aun. If anybody was able to do sin, it would be him. But yet the ulama say he never got involved. Musa alayhi salam never told him, ah, you used to do all that funny stuff in the castle. Now you're coming back to me and you I remember you. Mm -hmm. Remember New Year's? No, no, nothing like that. All he had was the fact that he had murdered one of the shurti, one of the police officers. And even we mentioned there that Musa alayhi salam was in his right. This person was an oppressor. Musa alayhi salam didn't even mean it. He hit him and the guy died. Knockout shot. What are you going to do? So each, each prophet, they were masoom, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam also, innocent. It's mentioned in the books of Tariq, that when the Kaaba was being rebuilt by the people of Mecca, that the little kids, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Rasulullah sallallahu was a small child at that time, not even a prophet of Allah ta'ala. And his uncles were telling the children, that go and bring the, uh, the bricks, the cinder block, you know, they had these big gigantic cinder block they had to bring. And the kids couldn't pick it up. So the kids had lungis on. They were you know, no shirt and they were wearing lungi, they were in the desert. And the kids started taking their lungis off, and obviously then they had their birthday suit on, no clothes at all. And they started putting the cinder block on there in their lungi, and they started, you know, carrying it like this. And their whole body is showing. The little kids. They looked to the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the time he was a little kid. And his uncle said, go, go, hurry up, get this in the block. Now, he's a young child, but still the blood of a Nabi is in him. He's a Nabi of Allah ta'ala. He's masoom. This is not something that is uh, appropriate for a prophet of Allah ta'ala. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he started walking towards the thing, he fell unconscious. <laughs> he fell unconscious. When they all went, they woke up and said, go, 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 get out of here, get out of here, you're not feeling well. And he got out of it like that. So even the Prophet Muhammad was like this also, all their lives. So that's why he says, Rasulun Amin. How can he say this to him? They don't even like him. But each one knows. Nuh alayhi salam, is he, you know, that deen he's doing, is he, I hate that deen, everything. Did he ever lie to you, did anything bad to you? No, no. I still got $10,000 by him. He's holding it for me. Are you still trustworthy? Everything, there's nothing wrong with him. Just, he's got this religion we don't like. Impeccable. They had incredible, uh, you know, incredible character. So he says, Rasulun Amin, I am a trustworthy messenger. Believe me, trust me. Fattakullaha wa ati'oon. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the way that you're going to be able to fear him is you have to follow me. Ati'ooni. Follow me. Of course, the sunnah of Nuh alayhi salam. Each prophet came with his own sunnah. Of course, the question arises that why would he tell his people to have taqwa? They had a bigger problem. 
If they said, okay, we have taqwa, we'll stay away from zina and drinking, and you know, we'll carry on our idol worship, their taqwa would be of nothing. So fattaqullah here means believe in Allah Ta'ala. Fattaqullah means here, believe in Allah Ta'ala, and after you believe, follow me. I'm sahibu sharia. I'm the one to show you the way how you have to worship Allah Ta'ala. Nobody can believe in Allah without the Rasul. Right? A person can say, I believe in one Allah, but I don't believe in any Rasul. No, no, then how are you going to know how to worship Him? The Rasul, they were the directors. They were the ones who directed us and showed us what to do. That's why I said, وَاتِعُونِي And follow me. وَمَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرِ إِنْ أَجْرِيَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ the undeniable ikhlas and sincerity of the Prophet. They were sincere. And nobody could tell them that they weren't. وَمَا أَسْأَلَكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ in أَجْرِ How is it? I don't ask you on this deen or for this tabliq any type of money, any recompense. There's no 99.95 entry fee into this religion. I'm not asking you anything. It's not about money. In ajriya illa ala rabbil alameen, my repayment is only on the responsibility of the Lord of all the worlds. He knows what I'm going through. He's the only one who can repay me properly. So this is the sign of the ikhlas and sincerity of the prophets when they said that I don't want any money. Our prophet also was told to tell the people this, that I don't want any money from you, nothing. All I want you to do is come into the religion. Actually, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the people's death, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that if there's any debt on a person, come to me, I will pay it for him. And the children, I will take care of them. Instead of taking money, Nabi sallam would give the money. That's why Nabi sallam used to be called Qasim, right? He used to say, on a Qasim, I am the one who is the distributor. I'm distributing ilm and knowledge and also used to distribute the money to the people as well. After this, Allah ta'ala says, again, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُونَ Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow me. After this, the reply from his people come. قَالُوا أَنُؤْمِنُ لَكَ وَاتَّبَعَكَ الْأَرْضَلُونَ They said, should we believe in you while the lowest of the community are following you? الْأَرْضَلُونَ Many of us have heard Akhlaq razila, right? Akhlaq razila, the low characters of a person. So radala or radlun, ardalun means the most lowest of the people. This was also a complaint from the mushrikeen Mecca at the time of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They didn't like the fact that the poor and the more unfortunate people were following the deen. This was also the complaint of the people of Nuh alaihi salam that the lowest of people, the blacksmith, the sanitation worker. There's a couple of people there, they're very poor. There's a couple of immigrants in our community. And they're, they're, they're accepting you. What about the affluent and high people? Mostly they didn't accept because they got a lot to lose. They got a lot to lose. Now, because uh, that atiru, atiruni, that's a hard for them. Follow me. They're the one everyone's following. But when the Prophet says you have to follow me, ah, oh, wait, 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 wait. We don't follow people, we're followed. They have a problem with that. But the poor and the more unfortunate, they said, we need a leader. We're looking for a leader. And Allah Ta'ala guided them. Allah Ta'ala took away their wealth and took away the good fortunes of this world in regards to money and things like that. But Allah Ta'ala gave them the best fortune and that was a soft heart which was ready to accept the haq and truth. So this is what the complaint was from his people. Anu'minu laka. Should we believe in you? وَاتَّبَعَكَ الْأَرْضَلُونَ while all of the lowest of the community, they are following you, how are we going to do that? After this, the beautiful reply from Nuh alayhi salam. قَالَ وَمَا عِلْمِي بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Nuh alayhi salam cuts right this conversation, doesn't go deeper. And Nuh alayhi salam says, وَمَا عِلْمِي I don't have any knowledge Bima kanu ya'malun of the things they used to do. Whatever you are, whatever is causing you to call them the low people, and it's quite possible they accepted Islam. We know that 
great characters like Umar an, and many of the Sahaba an, they were not the best of people when they were disbelievers. They're not like the prophets that from childhood they were, oh no, no, it's not like that. They were normal people. So some of them drank, some of them did wrong. It could be such that these people are talking like this. This guy used to be a fornicator, this guy used to drink, this was a drunkard, this is a prophet, this guy. You got a guy from jail, from jail, he's accepting Islam. What's this new? You got all these people. No, Allah Islam says, hey man, they came to me, they accepted Islam. I don't know what they did before. Ma and me, what is my knowledge of what they did before? I don't know what they did. So you guys understand? What are you saying? Then all and he says, In Hisabuhum illa ala Rabbi Law Tashurun. In Hisabuhum, their account with Allah Ta'ala, their account is only the responsibility of my Lord, Lo Tashurun, only if you can understand this. Only if you can realize this. We are not here to judge others. He came to me, he accepted Islam, he's following me, he's praying with me, he's not stealing nothing. He's following the rules of Allah Ta'ala. What's wrong with him? He used to do something before, he's left that. And whatever is hisab, now I'm not going to start questioning his sincerity also. His hisab and his account will be handled by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Lo tash'urun, only if you knew this people, you would not be bringing this issue up. Lo tash'urun. If you knew this, ma kuntum hadha. You would not have said this. You would not have worried about them. You're not understanding what I'm trying to bring before you. So this was the reply of Nuh alayhi salam. And after that, he tells them that, listen, this is not going to be an issue with me. وَمَا أَنَا بِطَارِدِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ he says, I will not drive away the believers. If they believe in me, and they had some past life that was wrong, they fixed it, they made tawbah, I'm not going to be the one that drives away these people. That's not me. I'm not here to do that. SubhanAllah, this also happened to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa The mushrikeen Mecca came, we've told this story before, and they came in Surah Al-Kahf, where they came and said, this Suhaib, Ibn Mas'ud, Bilal, all these foreigners and these poor people, get rid of them. We'll sit with you. Allah Ta'ala brought the ayah down. وَلَا تَطْرُ لِلَّذِينَ يَدَعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِي يُرِيدُونَ وَجَهَ مَا عَلَيْكَ مِنْ حِسَابِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ وَمَا مِنْ حِسَابِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَتَطْرُدَهُمْ Allah Ta'ala said, Do not repel, do not drive away those people who are calling their Lord in the morning and the evening. And they want the pleasure of their Lord. There is no responsibility upon you in regards to their account. And there is no responsibility of your account on them. Allah is not going to, when you stand before Allah on the day of Qiyamah, He's not going to ask you about that other guy over there. No, no. He's got to answer to me. What are you worrying about what he did? What are you worrying about his past or how much money he has in his bank account? Don't worry. Don't worry about this. You do not drive away people for these reasons. So Nuh alayhi salam also said, وَمَا أَنَا بِطَارِدِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ I'm not going to drive away any believer. He believes he's going to be part of my group. I'm not going to drive him away. إِنْ أَنَا إِلَّا نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ I am only an open warner to you. There's nothing else I can do. I will only openly warn you. What's going to be their reply? And we've always said this saying before, when you can't beat the facts, then beat the table. When you can't prove something to someone, so beat him up and kill him and try and get rid of him. That's exactly what they're going to do. Inshallah, next week, we will carry on with that. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Wa akhundawan alhamdulillah.